welcome back to the People's Panel on our second um, episode here. We've talked about Baltimore, and now we'll move our attention to the national news. We have special guests with us today, uh, Ms. Dina Bass, National Press Secretary for Dr. Ben Carson. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you. And I would just like to say that I was Dr. Ben Carson's press secretary on his political campaign when he ran for president. So I'm no, I don't work for him anymore, although I still have a great respect for him and loved what I learned from him while on the campaign trail. Um, of course, he um, spent most of his career in Baltimore, so your viewers would certainly be familiar with him. Uh, and I think for me as a national press secretary and a black woman to work for a man like Dr. Carson, it was an amazing experience. Absolutely. And um, I'd like to talk a little bit about the way, what I learned from Dr. Carson and the way he handled the media. And um, you know, I've spent 20 years in communications in various forms. I was a press secretary on Capitol Hill. I worked as a reporter. I produced local news. Um, so I've seen all different sides of the media, uh, but I've never seen it as vicious as it was mm. on the campaign with Dr. Carson. And um, he's a man of, uh, great wisdom and strength and faith and to watch him handle the attacks from uh, from the media with such grace was something to behold. There were days when we would go into studios and walk out and I would just be completely amazed at the um, at the kinds of questions that people ask that had nothing to do with the issues, nothing to do with um, what Americans wanted to hear about but were um, more designed to tear him down and we would leave those we would leave the studio and I would be loaded for bear I'd be ready to like punch someone and mm -hmm. Dr. Carson would be just you know um, what's next you know and so um, what I learned from that is uh, I learned a couple of things first of all people want to see a train wreck you know people want to see um, a car wreck uh, and so if you give that to them then they'll be that feeds them and Dr. Carson never gave that to them. He was always calm and he was always, um, he, he always stayed above the fray. Even when, like there were days when people <coughs> wanted to tear him down about his, you know, there were um, a number of things like he, about his bio, about um, just nuances and things that he would say, uh, but he would stay above the fray. And so, um, so I learned from him just to be First of all, to know what you're talking about, but not to not to worry about people who want to attack you because there will always be people who, who are in that position. Mm -hmm. But on the media side, I learned that um, that there really is media bias, and I'm not talking about the liberal media bias that we that we as conservatives often talk about. I mean, there are uh, mm -hmm. the media; uh, they often want to. Uh, there's there's conservative media and there's liberal media and and they find their heroes and their villains and they choose them and they um, and they often write the narrative like give me a headline and they'll write the story so sometimes they go in with their with their story before um, before the story is written and so you know on that campaign people wrote us off long before we were finished you know um, and even as Dr. Carson suspended his campaign there was still a great deal of enthusiasm and support for him because of his integrity, who he was, the way he carried himself, and even now, um, you know, he still has the um, the respect of Americans who saw him on the trail. So, Absolutely. Um, so that was it. Was a great experience. I wouldn't change it. You know, um, it was a very, very, uh, in very, very volatile in some cases. You know, with people um, constantly on the attack and um, but he again never he never took the bait. I'd like to pose a question what were some of Dr. Um, Carson's political views that still hold value mm -hmm. today going into this election? Well you know Dr. Carson is a man of great faith and I don't know that people really understand that about him um, he is a man who um, starts the morning in prayer, ends the ends in prayer. He is always in the Word, and as a believer, I mean, I'm an unabashed lover of Jesus, and and so to be on a campaign with the the candidate who is unashamed of his faith, that was amazing and it was wonderful. It was also great to see his family and his wife, Candy Carson. He, you know, um, 
we got to know them well and she you know married for 40 years and they are a team and I think that it is like we see that in, in Barack and Michelle like they are a team and that's beautiful and I, and I saw that certainly in, in Dr. Um, ben Carson and in Candy Carson uh, so his, his faith definitely governed his uh, governed his opinions and the, the things that he said and so there were people who would think like who would say you sh you know we should be doing this or we should be you know the, the um, politically savvy thing to do is this and Dr. Carson did the thing that the Lord told him to do you know wow. so um, and so sometimes that looks strange in politics but in the course of the way he um, you know the person that he had to answer to was was God so it didn't matter if it looked kind of uh, you know, not the politically savvy thing to do. Absolutely. We also have with us today a special guest, um, Mr. Daniel Wilson. Mr. Daniel Wilson, welcome. People's Thanks panel, speaking on Black Lives Matter. I understand that you are a single father, son, two, two years old. Yes, I do. How's he doing in school? Two years old, he's not in school. Not yet. Well, you homeschooling him, though. Um, considering it, definitely. Yes, yes. Expound a little bit on that. Well, I believe that we should educate our own, teach our own. So I'm definitely in support of homeschooling uh, and definitely in support of uh, community gardens because uh, I, I per se don't believe in everything that's being fed or taught to our children. And mm. if we want it to change and if we're going to have to do something about that. We can't rely on anybody else to teach our children right or feed our children right or do anything for our children right. And as, as parents, it's our job to make sure that they're being taught right and fed right. So you want to do something, you got to do it yourself. You want to see something done, you got to do something yourself, right? Absolutely. So that's what I believe. Oh. Absolutely. Also, the day with us on our national panel, we have Miss Didi Bass. Miss Didi Bass, welcome. Hi, how are you? Hi. It's actually Didi Bass Wilbon. Wilbon, I'm yes. Dina's older sister. Older sister? Yes. Hmm. We couldn't um, actually agree with that, but... <laughs> well, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> no one ever does. <laughs> That's wonderful. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? It's Fine. good to be here. On a national level, what do you think some of the concerns nationally that uh, the people, the community, are taking to the polls? What are some of their concerns? Just like this gentleman said to my right, um, I'm a mom of four, and I have a son who's 14 years old. And so I think um, a lot of parents are really concerned about their children and about education um, and keeping <coughs> our kids safe. Um, now, we're, when they're going to schools, we're not, it's not 100% sure that they're safe. You know, kids are taking guns to school and things like that. So I think for me as a mom, and I, again, as a mom of a young black boy, I want to make sure that my son is safe and that he is that he's not afraid of the police, that he respects authority, um, and uh, and that he's confident in who he is, and then he's confident in his in his skin, and um, I think that's very very important. And I think we as um, as a community we have to to work together to make sure that that happens, and that our children know who they are and know that what they look like, that it's okay to be a young black boy and to be confident and you can be confident and and not be angry yes and I think that's important I don't think that our children that and it starts at home it starts at home and then when they go to school mm -hmm. and so I'm glad that you believe in homeschool mm -hmm. I um I think that's great <laughs> so you know, he has, has to I worry commend, about if somebody comes to school with a gun <laughs> I commend all of our teachers because that is, that is, that is a very tough job but we have to make sure that the right individuals are in the classroom with our, with our children. Can I just add one thing? Uh, I also believe that we should be uh, thinking about policing ourselves now. Um, wow. As you can see what's happening in the media, um, mm -hmm. the, Ju the, Jewish, the Jewish community, they actually have their own ambulance and own police. We should be able to band together and have that for ourselves as well. Interesting. Definitely while we're on the topic of Black Lives Matter. We can't expect anybody to police us either. We have to do it ourselves so that way we're making sure everybody can get, are able to go home safely. That's powerful. Mm. You know I'm going to turn to the Reverend uh, Jerome uh. Stevens over here. <laughs> I wanted to ask you a question, sir, about what do you believe are the issues that the community nationally is taking to the polls? 
Clinton versus uh, Trump? I think this this year the actually the idea is that people would like to see a government for them and a government that is more responsive to their needs as opposed to the needs of others. That's one of the key things this campaign has looked at when you looked at the contrast of both candidates. And also people would like to see how the economy will fare their pocketbooks, their concerns about that, as well as the change that will happen with the criminal justice system. That it be a system for everybody, not a system that if I get pulled over because of the way I look or the color of my skin, that an officer will treat me different, but everybody will be treated the same. I think that has really uh, been on a lot of people's mind, the criminal justice system, whether you look at how one community is treated and then the crime issues, how some people may perceive how crime affects their community. That's powerful. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, um, regardless if Trump wins or if Clinton wins, is it going to be, do, are we going to have that same consensus in our in our lifestyle going forward, you know, and I think one of the things, one of the candidates is fueling a almost uh, a sense that we may have a greater division because a lot of people on one side would like to see people of color, if you will, to stay at their place mm -hmm. or want to have the things the way it used to be. This is a great country, and this country, America, is already great. We don't have to have anyone who perpetuates a divisiveness, a divisiveness message, which has really harmed this country within the last few days. The standing of elections and campaigns have actually gone down the drain because the way this campaign on has been run, especially by at least some people, uh, the Hamlets. Uh, you can't not just, you know, we hear these words about how you talk about people, one candidate talks about the mm -hmm. other candidate, and like that, lock them up, <laughs> criminal. It's almost like a candidate, the standard or uh, a candidate uh, has just, just belittled people, disrespectful in such a way that that they that that one sound almost like you out there on the uh, done resets in a ball field. Somebody say, "Coming on, brand on, <clears throat> all done." All Can I say something? I'm going to come to you. Um, I want to come to you, and then I want you to be prepared for me, Miss Christina. Okay, and then I'm gonna come to you. Yes, ma'am. I think that um, that there this campaign has been divisive. The rhetoric, um, you know, I feel from both camps have has been terribly divisive but I also think that one thing you know we and I'm and I'll, I'll actually use their names Donald Trump has used um, harsh words that have offended people and I think that because Hillary Clinton is such a seasoned um, pro she has done it in such a way that what you know, people on the campaign trail are calling it dog whistles and she's good at that because she's been doing that for 30 years and and I'll go back to where you know we're from Georgia and I remember being a young you know, teenager when Bill Clinton, who is a surrogate for Hillary Clinton, came down to Georgia to Stone Mountain and he stood in front of, um, uh, he stood with Zell Miller, our governor, and Sam Nunn, a, a senator, in front of uh, a row of black prisoners and he used those black prisoners as props and Stone Mountain um, and he was ready to sign the he was talking about being tough on crime and you can go and you can google that picture and it's, and it, and it's heartbreaking when you look at that because it's about a hundred prisoners yeah and, and it's heartbreaking when you look at that because the reason he did that the DLC not the DNC but another committee formed by Democrats the DLC understood that um, to get southern white votes, they needed to look tough on crime. We all remember Ricky Rector. We all remember during the campaign in 92 when both Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton flew back to Arkansas to oversee the execution of a man who was, in essence, um, mentally handicapped, a black man. But he, wanted, he didn't want to be Dukakis, 
because Dukakis <coughs> looked weak on crime, and he wanted Clinton wanted um, white Southern voters to recognize that he would even execute the ACLU didn't want him to execute him. The the far right didn't want him to execute Ricky Rector, but Bill Clinton did, and 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 today Hillary Clinton. While he is, people say Bill is not on the ticket. Hillary Clinton has, was never the classic first lady. She was a co-conspirator and a partner in everything that Bill Clinton did. So, so I am not like I am voting for Donald Trump, and I will say the name. I am voting for Donald Trump, not because he's the candidate that I wanted, but because I am exhausted with um, paying allegiance to a party that uses us as props and I look at the mothers mm. of the movement who I believe like these mothers who are who, who, have, who, have, who have lost their sons and my hope is that Hillary Clinton is not using these mothers of the movement as props right now the way those prisoners were being used as props like I want to know why if, if she has been if she has been an advocate for us for all these years <laughs> Why is yes, it that is. we only see her every yes, four is. years? Mm -hmm. You know, so I, and, but this is the thing, like I will, my, we talk about this all the time, we do not co-sign Trump's craziness. We're mm -hmm. not gonna do it. Definitely don't. <laughs> but as Republicans, we will support the nominee. And, and but, but we won't be deceived and, and pretend that Hillary Clinton or that the Democrats are doing us a favor. We as the black community, we need to, like, Young man, when you're talking about um, police, I had you like blowing my mind. I had never heard. Exactly. Like, I'm like, what? Yeah, you know, I, I talk about. That it. sounds like I, that I love good. it. Yeah, yeah I, that was really good. I'm actually not voting um, on the term that I rather not vote for any evil. They always people always say vote for the lesser of two evils. I rather not vote for any evil. Can I get some good in there? And why is it only two political parties? As if those are the only two parties that are going to reflect the. We have the, the Green Party the and your independence. Yes. Yeah, um, the Green Party was actually uh, supporting uh, the, uh, the UPP, Regime of People's Progression Party, which I'm, I'm actually a part of. Um, we're trying to get on the ballot as well, but we need support. So everybody be on the lookout for Regime People's Progression Party. Ms. Christina? Well, you know, when, when I think about national words to be used by Trump, probably was it's <laughs> something when he said, uh, what does the black people have to lose? <laughs> so, and I, and I think of that when you think of a national slogan like Black Lives Matter. <coughs> like, my thought should be that black minds should matter. And it should matter when it comes to situations mm -hmm. like our children and, and the opportunities that we can have. So I know one thing when I think about as being a small business entrepreneur, I think of the opportunities that should be there. And we should have that ability to achieve certain things without having that, that, that demeanor over us that we need to follow someone else's slogan. Mm -hmm. You know, because when someone come up with that slogan, it's like, wow, Black Lives Matter. Well, I feel like my life has always mattered. Yes. And, 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 and definitely that great faith that Ben Carson have is wonderful because you have to take that with confidence. Like, we shouldn't... I, I don't buy into that slogan because I feel like we just jumped on it because people said Black Lives Matter. Why? Because now black individuals are running around shooting each other. No, you know, we have creative minds. We have the ability to do great things. But when you're living in poverty, you're dealing with homelessness, you're dealing with all the issues nationally that are smothering our youth, our minority, our men, then, you know, they, they, they result to violence. So we have to look at the infrastructure of this situation too and don't just say, oh, black lives matter. No, their minds matter, but are they being nourished? Are they, given the, are they given the tools to, to be successful? President Obama said small businesses doing big things. Like if they get the tools and the resources to do the bigger things, they can be competitive with bigger entities, organizations. But you know, we, we're in a society where unfortunately that if we remain silent, we will be we will be smothered. And I use we because that's my brother, that's my sister. Mm -hmm. We are we are one of culture. Mr. So, Randall, um, <clears throat> how you guys doing? Uh, my name is Marche Randall. Um, I think you touched on it. Um, I'm kind of I'm still iffy with the election. Uh, I'm I'm more of 
trying to figure out no no real candidate really has touched on what can they really bring to the black people. Exactly. Um, I really haven't heard anything really. Uh, I really have been seeing us being ignored, yep. and uh, we keep fighting for social things. Mm -hmm. And I really want us to really. Uh, I want to see a candidate really invest in us economically. Economic. We really haven't seen no economic investment happen uh, towards us. And I think when you look at our communities, you see us. We're we, we going through mental trauma from, oh. from, from slavery back to we got lead paint homes, mm -hmm. uh, going, going all the way to uh, even uh, not enough school education, lack of invest investment. Mm -hmm. And so, like, uh, what I really want to say is uh, I, I have seen no – no one really pushed for investment within mm -hmm. the black community. Exactly. And, and, and when I talk about investment, you bring up businesses and being mm -hmm. entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. I really haven't seen enough investment for black businesses. Mm -hmm. You know, we talk all the time about giving black businesses loans while we giving the other businesses grant opportunities mm -hmm. or to big grow. Tips. Or big mm -hmm. tips. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think uh, really uh, it, it's time now. And I think at this point, when you look at the uh, the job opportunity, the rack work ex lack of work access opportunities for our our people, I think it's time that we kind of put our money where our mouth is and mm -hmm. really support our black people. Each other, exactly. Yeah. The question comes to the panel uh, with regard to the political race in the United States, win, lose, or draw, where are you guys individually going from here, regardless of who wins or who loses? I'm going to start with to my left. Well, uh, I'm going home and doing my research on everything that these politicians are doing to help or hurt our communities or in our uh, economy and our country as a whole. And uh, I think we need to hold our politicians, whoever is in the office, whether it be Barack Obama or Hillary Clinton or whoever, we need to hold them accountable for their actions and we need to follow their actions closely. We need to follow what they said they would do in their campaign and what they're actually doing. Because anybody can get up there and sweet talk you and have the gift of gab and lie to you. And like my brother said, Montrell is it? Lamontre. Lamontre, my brother Lamontre said, um, there's been no investments in, in our communities. So we need to follow the paper trail. How much dollars is coming to our communities? How can you expect somebody or a nation to thrive if there is no investments? You know, how can you expect I plan to grow if there's no seed planted, you know? So I want to make sure that these people are doing what they, at least they're, they said they were going to do. And uh, it's been many presidents who have told us one thing and lied to us and, and just forget it. They even lied and contradict themselves and get caught. And, but yet and still, we don't hold them accountable. We don't impeach them or we don't uh, have riots or protests when they're not doing what they said they were supposed to do. Right, so well. I would like to see everyone at this panel and everyone who's voting check up on it. Don't just cast your, your, your vote and say, yeah, uh, he's good. Uh, Donald Trump, he's going to take care of all. No. Follow his actions. Follow his campaign. See what they're doing. See what they're spending their money on. See what they're talking about. See what they're spending their time at. So I just challenge everybody to hold these people accountable. Great. Win, lose, or draw, I'm hoping that whoever wins, whether it's Trump or Hillary Clinton, that they only serve one term, to be honest. <laughs> I wish that the terms could actually be a little bit shorter. Um, but my family and I will continue to, not, to allow the Lord to lead us in everything that we do. Praise him. And we'll continue to teach our children to read their Bible and to pray. And um, because I think our country, we are in the situation that we're in in terms of our schools and a lot of other things because we've taken prayer out of schools. Right. And um, so win, lose, or draw, we will be respectful to whomever is sitting in that, in that White House. And um, we'll continue to, to be the citizens that we're supposed to be and be respectful and continue to work in our community and our churches and love each other and respect each other. And so um, that's it. That's Very so powerful. Awesome. Mr. Woodrow uh, McFadden. When lose the draw, I agree with the brother there. He, he must like, you know, be there for our children. You know, be the be the father figure for like a child who ain't got no father figure. And no matter what, when the election, I hope somebody be positive and about helping out our people and and be for the people, not against the people, and help our homeless population. 
Exactly. Yeah. So I'm gonna keep continuing doing what I'm doing, helping out Miss Flowers. It's housing homes. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Amen. 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 Dina Bass. Well, I echo uh, Miss, Mrs. Wilbon's sentiment. Um, when lose a draw, the Lord is in control. It doesn't matter who controls the White House because the Lord controls the universe. Right. Right. So, um, so I'll continue to pray and um, seek God's wisdom. Mm -hmm. uh, I am excited about what happens to the Republican Party on the other side of what looks like a civil war. I think it, it will be good for the party to um, have uh, uh, candidates who are forced to be more responsive to them. And I, I think that that's only a good thing. I, I feel like this is the, the soil when you have worms and everything else that makes mm -hmm. things grow, you know. So I think that this will be good for the Republican Party. And I look, you know, we started out with 17 candidates, a black man, um, a woman, uh, two uh, Latinos. Uh, so we started out with a, a diverse pool, you know, an Indian, uh, so, you know, everyone was in the, so I'm, exci I'm excited about that diversity, um, and I'm excited about the, you know, the growth that will come on the other side of this for the Republican Party. Excellent. Reverend Jerome Stevens. No matter who wins. No matter who wins. It is my hope that this country will be led by someone who can bring everybody together That's and right. do the right thing for all people. Mm -hmm. And as for me, I will continue to serve my fellow mankind and the beloved community. It's mm -hmm. powerful. Miss Christina. Well, you know, everything has been said well. Win or lose, you know, we have a personal uh, responsibility as individuals to, you know, follow our vision, follow our goals, support one another within our communities. You know, we, all we can do is just hold ourselves to a higher standard and what it is need to be done. Because it's all about how we conduct ourselves and whatever we, you know, put our mind to do, do it to the best of our ability. Keep God first of everything, everything. You know, no matter religion, background, right. one God. I don't care if you're Muslim, whatever. If we focus on one God, we're going to love each other to, like the Bible calls us to. And that's the best thing we can do. Absolutely. And just pray for the best and have some great faith. Pretty much what everyone said. Uh, at, you know, win, lose, or draw. Um, on my end, I'm going to keep up the fight. I'm going to keep uh, doing what I need to do on a grassroots level and getting our people you know, more aware about voter education and, you know, and fighting for different causes. Um, and really, I think it's just like it's all of our responsibility of uh, making this nation a better nation than it was when, when we leave it, you know? So that's, that's what it's all about. That's right. That there you have it. The People's Panel right here at Morgan State University in Baltimore, Maryland. We thank you for tuning in. Until next time, give yourselves a round of applause.